I thought, wow, I got this part because of my hair, and uh, isn't that wonderful? But I had known enough that you can't keep roots at exactly that size for a month and a half before shooting started. So I got more and more nervous that they were going to fire me because my roots were growing out. And then I learned, no, in fact, you can paint in roots. If you're really serious about having the embarrassing condition of having roots, you can dye your hair again. I had a good diet. This is all so interesting that acting yeah, comes down it to changes everything. <laughs> yeah. but, uh, what sort of learning curve was there in terms of being on a film set versus the stage? Totally different medium. Yeah, it was... Uh, you know, the, the in, in the Ruthless People movie, there was a... Um, it was exactly the same time that some of you might remember this. Uh, Halley's Comet came as close to Earth as it ever will come in our lifetimes. And that was a night that we were doing ex night shooting in uh, the park in Los Angeles, Griffith Park. And uh, we had a big 10K light that lit up the whole area that we were going to be shooting in. And there were thousands of people that were aligned in the park waiting for Haley's Comet, looking down at this little movie being shot. And me, in my first movie, I felt like, is this Greek theater? <laughs> you know, I thought, wow, this is some of the biggest, uh, am I playing to all these people out here or not? And I ended up playing to, uh, you know, I realized, no, this is just the camera and uh, down here and we'll better concentrate on that. So. so you talk about stumbling into comedy and sort of figure out, hey, I can actually be funny. So no great surprise, Mel Brooks decides to cast you in Spaceballs. Tell us a little bit about coming to the attention of this comedic icon and how that relationship developed. Yeah, well, you know, I think uh, people know enough about Mel Brooks now that he's not just a silly man. And he actually, to me, is like one of the few geniuses that I've encountered in my life. Uh, he's very knowledgeable about a lot of things and he had a wonderful relationship with his wife, uh, Anne Bancroft. And they came to see me in a very obscure play by a Belgian named de, Michel de Gelderode. Uh, and I thought, what is the comic genius coming to see this very complicated Belgian play that I'm doing now? But uh, he came to that before he cast me. So he knew that uh, he was interested in me and then uh, came to see a piece of theater and decided to cast me from that. Uh, so let's get into Spaceballs because here we have a movie in which you aren't exactly playing an existing character, but you are riffing on an existing character. What were some of the performative challenges of tackling material like that? Well, um, you know, I, uh, I think um, I, I recognized it was kind of a straight man in that, uh, you know, a lot of the more extreme humor could be provided by uh, John Candy and Rick Moranis who were playing the Mog and Dark Helmet, those memorable, iconic characters. But, uh, um, you know, one great thing about working with Mel Brooks is that he's kind of brilliant when he g tells you what he's thinking a line delivery should be. And uh, one of my favorites that would be always when he would show Daphne Zuniga what it was like to be a Jewish princess, because there's a big Druish princess inside of Mel. And, uh, but with me, he would say, you know, uh, I would do this line for you, Bill, but you're a goy, and uh, I, I'm a Jew, and uh, you, I don't know how to do goy. <laughs> so he really encouraged me to find my own way in his own special way. So we're arriving at a point where you are really starting to get a better understanding of, of, of who you are as a movie actor and you talk about realizing you're sort of the straight man. So a project like The Serpent and the Rainbow comes along, very different kind of director, Wes Craven versus Mel Brooks, at least on paper, sounds like two different universes. So what, what was it like to kind of switch from this completely broad comedy to something that was, in many ways, much more serious? Yeah, I think um, 
uh, I was really fortunate in that I played a real life character. His name is Wade Davis, and he had written a book called The Serpent and the Rainbow. He's an ethnobotanist. So he came and was very involved with production. So to, to me, it felt like doing a documentary more than it felt like doing a, a fictional narrative horror picture, which it kind of was. But uh, I think because he was there and because he uh, took, uh, took me to many voodoo ceremonies in Haiti and in uh, Dominican Republic, and by the time we went to shoot, you realize this is a passionate belief system that uh, I learned to honor through Wade's sense of honoring this uh, belief system very different than our own. Uh, but as uh, important to them as our belief systems are to us, and we were, it was important to honor that uh, inside this horror picture. And then all of a sudden we get into the 90s and.